Okay, California History Scholars, we had talked, uh, I gave you the, the, the uh, that uh, C-SPAN talk I gave on the high hopes of California, and that emphasized Figueroa, emphasized the Mexican, going back to the Spanish plans of giving India, land back to the Indians, and uh, a, uh, especially the high hopes of a college up there in, in the, what's called al Asal, next to Salinas at the top of the Salinas Valley, right next to Monterey Bay, is uh, Jose de la Guerra, Jose Figueroa, and William Hartnell coming together to put together a, a, a school, a college even, that would be a, uh, for Indians as well as, as Mexicans, and it would be, uh, you know, that's the sign when things are really in the high hopes and, and we're going to go somewhere, is, is we're not only going to uh, be stable, we're actually going to have our aspirations of, of creating our own college, okay? Um, so those are the high hopes. Now, now we'll sort of bring these down, okay? Uh, we don't want to, there's, there's some problems. There's lots of problems. There's, uh, and the reason I gave you this book here, this is uh, testimonials. This is eyewitness reports from, from women who were interviewed during the United States period, uh, asking for their memories back into the Mexican period and even back into the memories of the Spanish period. And so uh, I gave you uh, Juan Machado uh, to read for today. I gave you Apollonaria Lorenzana, I love that name, uh, for uh, a little earlier. And then uh, Angustias uh, Delaguerra will be for uh, next week. And these are, these are hard to read at one level because they're, they're, they're interviews in which their memories are piling out. And uh, so they jumble and they don't have a real clear narrative. On the other hand, there's, this is what historians love. This is, the, this is the archaeology of historians is that we dig into things and we dig into these things. And so when you read these, uh, what you're looking for is signs of stability, signs of strength. I mean, there's, when you read Juan Machado, Echendia is, again, this governor that's got optimism bringing things. They get mad at Victoria, another governor who uh, is a, despot, a despot, despotic, uh, tyranny, uh, tyrannical. And so uh, Echendia comes back in, and we talked about Echendia. And then after Echendia is Figueroa, and Figueroa is the time of the high hopes. And so this is, this is what we're doing, is you, you can sort of see the political world. You can also see the, uh, the Apollonaria story is much more benign. It's about her educating girls and how the things work pretty well at the missions. Uh, when you read uh, Juana Machado, you see sort of another story, which is, is uh, there's this, they both tell the story of an Indian attack uh, on uh, these um, uh, ranchos that are right on the edge of San Diego, a little to the east of here. And um, Juana Machado makes, makes the distinction, which we need to make the distinction of also, is there's the, uh, the Indians in the, in, the, in the realm of the mission. Call, she calls the Christian Indians, the neophyte Indians, these Indians that had accommodated themselves into the uh, uh, Mission and Presidio San Diego world are in a sort of different realm from the, the what she calls the Gentile Indians, which are coming from over the hill, Hakumba, and out toward what is now Ocotillo and out there into the ends of Borrego Desert. Those Indians hadn't been part of the mission. And so they're, they're raiding, they're grabbing horses, and that causes, uh, you know, troubles. And also you have uh, the depiction in Juan Machado of this guy, Gonzalez, who's sort of a, a sergeant gone wild. He's almost, a, he's a, what we would almost call a vigilante of some form. He just, he just uh, goes out, he's killing what he considers... Uh, Indians who deserve to be killed. He takes a guy out of an orchard and shoots him, even when Machado says she, he wasn't doing a thing. And so, remember, she is, represents, in many ways, the, the stability of San Diego, uh, one of, um, as does Apollonaria. And then, but there are these elements of instability, and especially uh, violence. Her own husband, um, First husband is this guy who had jumped ship in 1833, it says, 
uh, who had off the Ayachoco, who was, which was a ship that uh, Dana talks about on the coast of California. And in 1833, a couple years before Dana, jumps ship and is, uh, uh, becomes a Catholic. Therefore, he can marry, wanna get land. And then when the Americans come over, if you look at the dates, he dies in 1847. So before the Americans are fully over, but after the Americans come and the Americans come in and make him a, uh, a justice of the peace. And these justice of the peace are very important for the American system of government. And in general, also, uh, they represent local government. And a, a local, a good local official can have great effects, but a bad local official can also have huge bad effects. So, so, um, you know, we see interesting things here, much more localized story and, and a lot of destability, instability over with Juana Machado. And, uh, and so read those, read those, uh, you don't have to read them carefully. What you need to do is those move through them and, and get a, get a sense of, of the ups and downs of what's going on. Cause we're, we're talking about the downs. Now, uh, I wanted to, oh, here's a, here's a picture of Juana. Yeah, look at these cats. You know, it's tough. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is Juana. And um, what I wanted to point out here is is, is there are, uh, during this time, both Juana Machado and Apolinaria talk about this local Indian raid in which two little uh, Mexican girls are kidnapped. But uh, the two big revolts in the Mexican period. 1824 and 1829 are uh, here up on the San Jose to the Stanislaus River and down here on the Santa Inez River. Uh, the 1824 revolt, both these have many complex reasons for happening. And so you don't want to just overstate uh, Indians revolting against uh, European colonists. What's happening is that uh, the the two missions and Santa Barbara, but mostly the two missions on the Santa Inez River, uh, revolt. Um, you know, if you go back into the original documents, there seems to be some witchcraft, sort of a, 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 the, some sort of you know d religious weirdness going on, and uh, but then it, and then there's this resulting uh, soldiers who are whipping. Uh, in, in uh, you know uh, you know badly treating the Indians uh, and and then there's this concerted where they actually communicate up and down the river to we're going to revolt on a certain day and so eventually you know uh, upwards of 400 Indians gather at Mission La Purissima near Lompoc here and uh, and and set up a stockade they're pretty much ready to fight off the Mexicans. Uh, Jose de la Guerra, as the presidio at the presidio down in Santa Barbara, brings uh, a bunch of uh, soldiers north, and then also a bunch of soldiers come south. And the soldiers coming south, soldiers coming north, are able to uh, put down the revolt. And uh, the uh, missionaries are actually sort of acting as intermediaries in this situation, and it's not. There's no indication that it's a clear attack on the missionaries or the missions, and um, the actual settlement of the the revolt is is that the four leaders are sentenced to prison. They only take four. They sentence those four to prison, and all four are, if I remember correctly, all four are released back into the uh, Indian population, uh, as typical of the of the sort of when the justice system is working correctly for the Spanish and the Mexicans, they want to do these sort of role play pardons, you know, and sort of to show this Christian charity and the idea that you're pardoned from sin and stuff. On the other hand, um, there was, and this is a, a sort of side event, but there were some travelers who were traveling uh, through what is now, I think, Gaviota Pass up that way up along in there and uh, Indians, uh, a group of Indians, a group of, a side group of Indians attacked and killed them. And so uh, those 
those Indians are executed by De La Guerra for the um, sort of random murder of these other other uh, travelers. So uh, I know I'm not explaining it well. It's actually a very, very complex event, but it's uh, uh, the main distinction is, is that it, it's a mission Indian revolt that is, is handled actually fairly well and is not indicative of, uh, of necessarily systematic problems. It's indicative of, here again, of, of sort of random, you know, uh, riffraff soldiers causing, causing troubles type of thing. So I want to over, over, you know, um, simplify it, but at the same, th uh, as, a, as a benign event, I mean, it's a, it's a full on revolt. But here again, the causes of it are diverse, especially if you read the uh, Maria Solaris, this, uh, her, her description of why the event started uh, that was told to anthropologists at the beginning of the 20th century. And then the, um, uh, the way it, it works out with a pardon for the leaders of the, the uh, revolt and the killing, uh, the executions are for a separate event, okay? Those often get sort of conflated. The uh, event up here is also very complex. You have this guy, um, Estanislao, who is an alcalde. He's one of the elected officials at the San Jose mission, and he heads through the mountains. He leaves and goes into uh, what is now the Estanislaus River. This is Estanislaus Forest. This is all comes from, I think, his name. And then um, uh, Vallejo, who we're going to talk about here. Vallejo is a, is a young commander of a number of soldiers who head out there, and they there's actually the Indians build a, you know, a, a type of little fortress area to protect themselves, and a full-on battle happens, and Vallejo is really ruthless. And, uh, and so you do get a massacre of Indians, which, uh, you know, we're not talking, the, the, there's no, we're going to get a lot more massacres of Indians under the United States and much more random violence against Indians in the, um, by the, uh, under the United States. I, it's just that Mexico shouldn't be portrayed as, as, uh, you know, massacring Indians, uh, but this is an event which, yes, the the army of Mexico under under official leadership went out there and massacred massacred Indians. Stanislaus himself, Stanislaw, uh, comes back to Mission San Jose, and here again is pardoned, and uh, and he eventually uh, uh, come, goes back to being a neophyte for a long time. Um, yeah, he uh, he eventually dies of a epidemic. Okay, so you know uh, these. If you're interested in these, you, uh, there's good good studies of them. But but uh, you get into the uh, if you get into the weeds with figuring out what's going on at these these, uh, especially the one down here in in uh, San Inez River, and you get a very interesting complex. This is this. This is the bit of the chaos of, of, of California that needs to be settled, and uh, the Mexicans do not have a chance to settle it. Figueroa dies, everything, you know, and then uh, we're going to see that uh, the government after Figueroa doesn't really control the society well enough that we can then, you know, when the United States comes in, uh, they can portray this as a place that uh, they're coming in to control. All right, let's let's talk about these uh, the uh, the uh, best hope, I suppose, the idealistic uh, leaders of of California, Mexican California, after uh, Figueroa, and you have a group of young people called the Young Californios. These are the three principal members of them, and they were educated in Republican values, and uh, they're actually uh, he's the uncle of Alvarado and Castro, I think. And then Cast these two are cousins. Uh, but you can see their, 
He's two years older. He's 1809. He's 1808. See, they're all within one year. You know, they're all very close to each other in age. And the three of them formed a type of cohort in Northern California, primarily living up there, okay? Jose Castro becomes a military leader, much like, much like uh, uh, Vallejo was a military leader. And then Alvarado becomes the politician. And Alvarado is the one who's most interesting. Although if you know of Castro Valley up in the Bay Area, you know, Castroville, there's uh, Vallejo, uh, the town of Vallejo, uh, and uh, Vallejo's um, rancho was uh, up there. His, his ranch house is in Petaluma. He sort of controls that northern part of the, the uh, uh, San Francisco Bay. And Benicia is named for, Benicia, California is named for his wife. Okay, so these are very significant figures. But we want to look at this guy, all right? This is, this is Alvarado. And um, Alvarado did a lot in California to try and stabilize and follow what was his, his great model was Figueroa. He was the secretary of the, um, the Disputacion, uh, this, the legislature. He's a young guy. He's in his 20s. And this is where I want to show you something out of that. Um, this is, this is, uh, this is, is Pito here, but the rebels called upon Don Juan Batista Alvarado, who would get as a period of, 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 uh, you know, it's unclear who's going to be governor of California. And then the rebels, this, these Northern, this Northern California group called upon Don Juan Batista Alvarado to be governor of what they called a free and sovereign state of California. I want to I want to explain that just a bit. Is is uh, let's go back to here. Is um, in 1836, you get uh, you know, Figueroa died 1835, 1836. This destabilized. This is the same time as the Alamo in Texas. Okay, remember the Alamo. And Texas revolts against Mexico for the same reason that we're talking about these revolts here, is, is that uh, a, a sort of dictatorship has been set up in, in Mexico. They go, they're going through some great struggles down there, uh, which they go up and down, and we re react to them. And so Texas, this is where Texas is going to declare its independence on the basis of a whole bunch of immigrants who had come into to Texas had declared themselves Catholics, had declared themselves Mexican citizens, and were willing to, you know, say they were going to follow Mexican law. But they revolt to that, and then eventually you get the story of Texas. In California, you have these folks also who who are quite willing to accept the Constitution of 1824, but then with a dictator in Mexico City that seems to be undermined. And so California declares its independence in 1836 in a very similar sort of move to Texas in 1836. And uh, Mexico comes up and, and sends an emissary. There's uh, Southern California does not go with Northern California in this situation of, of declaring its independence. And so there's, there's a uh, military struggles but all works out when uh, Alvarado accepts being governor of California, and he then wants to be the kind of governor that Figueroa was. And to this building here, when you go up to Monterey, is a good, it's the customs house, it's, it's the government building. This is a good example of how he wanted to, to stabilize California and get things rolling well. Another thing about Figueroa, excuse me, Alvarado, here's a, Alvarado vainly harangues the Indians of San Miguel, declaring their emancipation. Um, he wants to continue the secularization that was begun by Echendia, uh, and carried on by Figueroa, and actually begun back in the Spanish period by Neve, which is this hope to get the Indians to embrace their freedom, and uh, he wants to set up 
pueblos and things like that, along with Mexican policy. But Alvarado is a, a young man. He's a very weak, weak character uh, in the sense that uh, he can be uh, pushed around, manipulated by, you know, a lot of these uh, more wealthy people. And also, he has. Uh, He's an alcoholic. He, he, uh, at least he appears to be, uh, and he he has ups and downs and instabilities that are tied to that, and so, so he he does not accomplish near what he had hoped. He he's not a figure to carry on Figueroa's uh, goals. And then later on comes in um, Pico, and Pico in, in very self-serving move hands out lots of ranchos. Alvarado, on through back to Figueroa, had also set up ranchos. But the ranchos become, there becomes to be a lot of ranchos, and with a lot of ranchos, you get a lot of destability. Uh, Pueblos are where stability is. Ranchos are people who sort of are doing their own thing. And as an example of these ranchos doing their own thing, it's in 1839 under Alvarado, as Alvarado grants Johann Sutter a rancho in the interior. And at this point, he begins creating what is called Sutter's Fort, which becomes, when he, especially when he gets cannons taken over from uh, Fort Ross, the Ru when the Russians leave, it's the most m physically imposing place for uh, in California, and it looks like he might actually be on the road to declaring Central Valley into a sort of a Liechtenstein or some sort of interior uh, country of his own, independent from California. So a lot of chaotic things are going on in California. Uh, one last one, I'll just give you this, just because it's fun to think about, is that uh, the Mormons had moved into uh, uh, Utah, and uh, as Mormons then come down into San Bernardino and begin to establish themselves, they are actually looking to declare what would be this nation, uh, independent nation apparently, of, of Deseret. And uh, if you notice, uh, Long Beach here, San Pedro, uh, instead of being the port of Los Angeles, uh, you could think of it as becoming the port of Salt Lake City. And so just as I'll leave you that with a little fun idea there, that San Pedro uh, could have become the port of, port of uh, you know, Salt Lake City and this uh, place of desert. Notice they're also taking San Diego as, a, as the, the Pacific touch of, the, of what they hope to do. They're never able to accomplish this. The United States is going to come in and take over all of this and, and reorganize it. But this is the story of destability. You have Indian revolts. You have local, like this guy Gonzalez, who's depicted as an evil person, just killing what in a vigilante sort of way uh, Indians. And you have uh, 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 Governor Alvarado coming and having high hopes and being, a, you know, you, you gotta like Alvarado, but he's working against uh, against uh, his own demons, really, and uh, and his own inexperience. And then Vallejo and Castro are also uh, young men who who don't really have the 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 experience nor the nor the backing to really do what what needed to be done to stabilize California militarily. So we get into a lot of troubles. And then we'll talk now in the future about the coming of the United States.